Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword! Last time, we entered the Ancient Cistern and cleared our first major objective in getting rid of the waterfall in front of the carp's mouth, allowing us now to dive deeper into the temple. This time, as common logic would dictate, we are going deeper into the Ancient Cistern! So into the carp's mouth, we get to see that the inside of its mouth is... Um, very unhealthy looking. You might want to get that checked out. Yeah. But we're gonna leap right out, and leap back in, and then we go out, and back in. No, okay, we're not gonna be quite that safe here today. We see that it's, a uh, deformed Siamese twin with another carp on its butt. A la cat dog, I guess. Right behind it, however, behind the freak of nature, we have a treasure chest giving us a red rupee. I believe that means that we only have one more treasure to get on this floor. Also, hi buddy that I can kill with one sword slash and then doing a finisher. Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. And I will not be seeing you for a while again because you are dead. Now, the whip has also some pretty darn cool uses. It's able to go through cage bars, allowing us to hit switches on the other side of them. Definitely something very cool to keep in mind. Again, the whip has lots of cool uses. You're going to be finding new ones for it all the time. It is a pretty darn cool item. Speaking of pretty darn cool items, the harp is not one of them, but we gotta use it right here anyway if we wanna get everything that's available. Blessed Butterfly! I suppose this is a fairly strange location. Uh, did he just eat the Blessed Butter- Okay, no, he didn't. I was wondering if he was even capable of doing that. Knock you out. I guess you are- Wow, it was like- a, I'm impressed that we got two jelly blobs out of him. B, that looks super cool how he kept just regenerating as we were slashing him apart. He looked like he was bomb jumping or something, like in Super Metroid. Uh, gonna strum my harp. Ready a skyward strike. And as I said, there are many different things that you can do to these goddess walls. I will be demonstrating yet another one of them. I'm gonna draw a line and a circle. I have learned Cherry Bomb, or rather just regular bomb, or I guess Flower Bomb? It's eh, kind of close, I guess. It is still a plant, and it is a bomb. You're able to get loads and loads of bombs from doing that. I believe every one of those bundles is 10, so it's basically a full bomb recharge, unless you're really overzealous with stocking up on bomb bags, but I did want to show that that was there. We are going to have a use for bombs coming up, so I did want to make sure that I had more than a few of them. You guys, hi! Been fighting loads of you, but that's okay. Nice and easy for us. And we got this rotary thing that we can climb on. That's the name that I'm going with. I really don't know what you would call something like this. I'm gonna rest for a second, get my stamina back. And now that I've done that, we can now ride it out for the rest of its distance. I wanted to run over and pick up that arrow. <laughs> Again, I am playing too much of a certain other game and it's bleeding into what I think when I play this one. No. <laughs> it's overtaking my mind, man. Uh, you know what? No, actually. We might accidentally lock onto that guy over that way, so how about this? Good first chance to try out our scatter shot. Charge with A, wait for the meter to fill up, and then one pellet becomes 12. Yeah. Very helpful, makes it a lot easier to hit your mark, especially from far away. What you want to do is swing on this until you've locked onto that. Stay on it, and it will not allow you to do that. Okay. Could I... no. Uh, no, not... also not what I wanted to do, thank you very much. Lock onto the thing. Uh, lock onto the thing. Please let me lock onto this. If we try to climb up, we can't go any further. Please let me lock onto this thing. Wait, I have been doing this wrong my entire life. You can just swing directly onto it. I have always locked onto it in mid-flight, stayed locked onto it down here, and then whipped upward at it, and it always worked, so that's how I thought you were supposed to do it. But I guess you guys have witnessed my moment of epiphany. Not always a common thing that you see, you know, always one of those special moments that you're happy to have on video forever and ever. Or at least I am, because it was my epiphany. Get you. Kill you. I said kill you. I said kill you. Don't you know how to follow a simple order as that? Get you. Please. Please. Thank you. Now you can let me whip this flywheel in peace. And it's that time again. 
all the great games have a time where you do this. Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. That's the only one that's coming to mind right now, but I'm sure more of the greats have a scene where you get flushed down the toilet. And where else would it let out? but the most demonic sewage plant ever built. Seriously, this place looks like the underworld, and uh, uh, I'm sure your sewage appreciates the great interior decorating job that you did here that no one but me has ever gotten to appreciate. I at least appreciate it a lot, and uh, I, I don't want to hit that sculpture alone with my sword. Let's go to the side and use our beetle. Give him more time in the sun, or more time in the lack there of a sun. And there's actually two of them, so good, it is a smart move. It's just so nice how many items are insta-kill on different enemies if you're clever about using them. It's something that I wish more people would have experimented with though, because everyone I knew just, they were like, man, no, I use my sword and everything, and everything like blocks my hits though, but I, I think my friends' experiences and just the general stories that we had when sharing our experiences is kind of the reason why I put a lot of emphasis on that, and why I just think it's kind of a big deal to point out why I like it a lot. If we go over this way though, uh, the Zet Bokoblin has something rather shiny on his hip. How about we take a whip to the hip, yeah. First time seeing this, your whip is an item thief as well. If you ever physically see an item, any sort of collectible material, anything, on an enemy and you use your whip on it, you are able to snatch it from them. It's used for more than just small keys. There's quite a lot of cases where enemies actually do have materials on them, but you might not notice it at first glance. This is why I've been pointing it out every time that there's been an instance of that. And it's what I was talking about when I said we're gonna have an easy way of getting monster horns in the near future. Master, I have some important information that I am certain you will want to hear. There is a large treasure chest in the area. <laughs> Uh, there is an 85% probability it contains the key that will open the door we observed at the top of the stone statue, just like the three that we saw before it that you didn't point out to. <laughs> you are certain that you want to hear it, so that's what it means when you are 100% sure about something. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just, that caught me off guard. I was thinking, do tell, what is this valuable information you are certain that I would want to hear when we already saw the chest down there, but... I mean, at least the place is very pretty. The light shining down from above and just how everything's all purple and it's such a contrast to everything we saw above ground. Speaking of everything that's above ground, it's time we got flushed up the toilet. Again, doing firsts in this world. And we're gonna end up above ground yet again. This room, I quite like. It is quite creative, quite. I can definitely see how some people have issues with Skyward Sword and thinks it has its problems, but I think most of us can agree the dungeons are not one of them. And this room is a great testament to that. It's very creative. So, as we get up to the top of this, we see what we gotta do. Uh, treat our infection from this Quadrobaba. No. No, I was talking about how cool it is to insta-kill stuff. I haven't done this one in a while. Uh, uh, I, I, doing the top-down per- I was holding down Z to lock onto him and I didn't need to, so I was looking at it from above. There! We don't go. Four, third time's a charm. There you are! I clearly could not have just done it faster if I used my sword! Yay! I was wanted to show that if you jump down, you now open a little bit of a pathway. Has a red rupee in it. That's nice and all. But, uh, did I? Did I? Did I? Did I get the red rupee? I didn't hear it get picked up. Maybe I'd, I, 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 uh, I can't really work out what was going on there. Uh, oh, folks, I don't want to deal with you. Oh, wait, uh, what? I think I actually got decalibrated there for a second. I was trying to swim straight, but I kept swimming to the right. I am losing so much health here, holy wow. Uh, at least they're all gone. Just get out of the water before I totally die. We go out and back in. And sometimes if you want to do it three times, we have done that now too. At least total between all the times. That's good enough, right? Kill, kill you. I'm having a lot of trouble all of a sudden. Jeez, since when do I have trouble with the motion controls? <laughs> uh, I think I had like one other time when I said that though, so uh, I guess for the record, that's how it is. Yeah. 
hit that flywheel. And here's where things get pretty darn clever. We were setting up something earlier without even realizing it. We flip it right over, it stays on top of that. Nothing wants to work right today. Okay, maybe that's all just as well. Maybe it was a sign from above that, hey, Chugga, you forgot something, and I'm gonna be saving you a few hundred comments by making you come back through here again. And realize that you never pulled this lever that gives you a shortcut back to the main area. So it was all a blessing in disguise. This loops back around to where we opened the chest with the dungeon map. Should you ever need a quick way to return there, that's what that's for. As is with all the other times that I have said that. Now we make the jump. And with all of that set up, we can now go further deeper into the temple. Further deeper. Further deeper. Yeah. Can't reach that all the way up there by vaulting up onto the wall, so we use our whip yet again to get that out of reach. And yet another way that loops back around here and shows us uh, Buddha's dreadlocks that he's trying to grow out. Anytime you want to unfurl that tail. Anytime. Now I'm gonna chop you up into chicken nuggets. And that's that. It feels like such a shame killing those things. Like they're so majestic and pretty and all those things and they have never gotten off an attack on me, so I really can't say what did they ever do to you, because they really haven't done anything. Break away from you, break away from you, break away from you, break away from you. At least I'm above solid ground, so it doesn't matter if I fall at this point. Treasure chest! I see something over there. I see something that I collected earlier that respawned. And I'm gonna use my awesome beetle technology my ABT to collect that. Probably could have killed him while I was down there by just aiming out of my slingshot, but I didn't wanna. I like a good challenge, and I also like being able to use my slingshot on bigger and better things. Drop down this way, and am I in the right? No, I am not. That is the very wrong place. Would have been bad to fall right down there. What I actually need to do is burn away all my stamina because I'm impatient, but it's fine. And go as leftmost as I possibly can. Let go, grab on again. There's no way to leap down. And I don't want your face. <laughs> did he, did he die? Did he? I didn't know they could die from fall damage. Gruesome. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. I thought they had to fall in the water to die, but I guess when you're a lowly Walchula, just about anything will kill you. Except for me, because I'm incompetent. Yeah. Gonna grab that. Whip down that lever. And it's just like those times in school when you're cold, so you put your knees inside of your jacket and feel all warm and toasty inside, but also look like you have boobs in the process so the other kids make fun of you. But you don't care because it's nice and cozy and comfy. We're gonna head into the statue of Buddha. And that leads us right back into the mouth that is now where his crotch used to be. It is best not thought about, but it is the way forward, and that's what's important. We'll hop down all that way. Not even angry about getting interrupted because I got to admire that pillar of water again. Welcome to the underworld. I love how the first half of this place gives you this false sense of security because it's all light based and all watery and just feels so full of life and everything, but no. As life-filled as the first part was, we're now in an undead area. Meet cursed macoblins. They will latch onto you like a redead will, but they fear divine objects. If you show them any sort of divine shield, they will cower in fear. Alternatively, if your blade is infused with the power of the sky, they will back away from you all scared like. Just like other macoblins, you can knock them right over, do a finisher on them to instantly kill them. That guy almost got me right there. Otherwise, they can take a lot of hits to bring down. They just merely get knocked over and they'll get right back up again. You'll see it with this guy right here, actually. 
Um, I think to kill them, you have to do like six or seven hits or something like that. Yeah, he's giving me a second prompt for a finisher, even though I think I've hit him five times in total. They, surprisingly for being dead, have a lot of life in them, yeah. <laughs> there are a few other things that you can do. One of my favorites being that because they're so slow moving and not really aware of the things around them too much unless they've noticed you, they're very easy to kill with bombs. And if you do that... It didn't happen, okay. Um, if you do that... Uh, no. Go this way. Please go this way. Come on. Got a nice juicy link here for you. Yeah, there you go. Nope, still not going to happen. I'm trying to show that if you use bombs on them... Uh, he's kicking that thing around like a soccer ball. That's kind of dangerous. Uh, please be close enough to... I Come on! Does <laughs> he notice me over here? Please tell me he does. Uh, camera, thank you. There are other ways to do this, I just really like showing off bombs because they move so slowly and just kind of stammer around in place that... Did I... <sighs> Fine, I will throw it and thump my controller on the desk in frustration! Didn't really intend it that way, but fine. Okay, fine. I guess bombs are not working well for me today. If you kill them with bombs, there is a chance of something happening. Alternatively, however, you can use your whip and be all like... Who's got your loincloth? Who's got your loincloth? If you don't do what I say, I'm gonna rage the age rating of this game. Yeah! Finish him off! We do that, and you're able to instantly kill them quite easily without having to hit them a whole bunch. Just do that with your whip, daze them, they're a sitting duck, and then you can stab them right there. Man, I am not getting this thing to spawn. You can do it with the whip, you can do it with the bombs. I believe the chances are higher if you use the bombs, at least that's what I've noticed in my dealings with these guys, but, wow. I guess that's what I get for having shady dealings, but hey. Uh, fire keys, good old fashioned fire keys that are not going to give me a, ah, you guys, you were holding out on me. I thought I was going to have an easy time getting the other thing that I was trying to get, but instead I got a monster claw, so it all works out. Come on, come on, take you out. I think I'll let these uh, blessed butterflies live and not juice them down to make potions and instead reveal the goddess wall. Uh, there's something cool. No, I guess I'm not that low on health. Uh, okay, so we'll do another Skyward Strike. And to show another thing that we can draw here. Okay, good, it didn't make a butt. We get hearts. <laughs> loads and loads of hearts, almost a full heal. Very helpful to remember if you ever need it. Kinda. They're, well, uh, no, I'd say it's the most health that you could recover from a goddess wall out of everything. A gemstone shining deep within the eye. Strike it to shut the, the mouth and damn the flow. Take these bombs. A one bomb. A two bomb. A three bomb. A four bomb. A five bomb. And I guess while we're down here, since we're fighting loads and loads of cursed bacoblins, we definitely haven't seen the last of those jerks. We gotta talk about bacoblins. Specifically about the pronunciation. I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time, because I got a lot to say and it's been building up, so strap in. <laughs> Growing up, I always pronounced it bacoblin. I thought it made sense, because, you know, they're clearly based on goblins, and that's how you pronounce that. My first Zelda Let's Play that I ever made was Wind Waker. And it was the first time that I'd spoken in front of a lot of people saying that name. When I did that, I got a lot of people upset being like, It's Bokoblin, what are you talking about? You know, their Japanese name is Bokoblin, and that's how you'd pronounce it in Japanese. You're saying it wrong. So I switched to saying Bokoblin, but then I had just as many people that were then saying, You know, why'd you change your pronunciation? You were saying it right before, and now you're saying it wrong. What gives? I just kind of chose to ignore it, and I didn't let's play another game that prominently featured... Bacoblins until this point. Now getting into why I switched back to saying it is Bacoblin is that in promoting Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, in Nintendo of America's live streams, I heard the commentator say Bocoblin, which is the first time that any sort of like official vocal thing that I've ever found has ever verbally said the name. So I'm like, okay, I guess the official pronunciation is Bacoblin, and I can just kind of point to that whenever people tell me I'm wrong. Cool. 
So I do that and pronounce it that way for a while. Then we get to Lanayru Desert and we fight Technoblins. And I get some people that, some people were okay with it. Others were kind of rude. That were all like, why are you saying Technoblin? By your own logic, wouldn't it be Technoblin? Why aren't you saying Technoblin? And to that I say, what about Moblins? The enemy that's been around since the very beginning that I'm pretty sure Bacoblins were based on when they were making them because they have very similar names. But at the same time, yes, Technoblin is an official name that implies that Bacoblin should be pronounced Bokoblin. There's legitimate reasoning on both sides for how it should be pronounced, and no matter which one I pick, I'm wrong. Bokoblin is supported by Technoblin and by the Japanese language. Meanwhile, Bacoblin is what Nintendo of America says, and it's supported by Moblins and Goblins. I doubt anybody pronounces it Moblin, but hey, yeah. So. I never would have ever expected that such a simple little mook of an enemy could cause me so much grief. Yet this has been an ongoing saga in my life for over seven years, and no matter which side I pick, I lose. It's just... It's all a very roundabout way of saying that I'm going to go on saying Bokoblin because it's the way that I always pronounced it, it's the one that I'm most comfortable with, and I'm technically not wrong. I honestly think Nintendo themselves have no idea how the fridge to pronounce this thing. So... There it is! Evil Crystal! Man, complain about pronunciations, and um, I guess they just hand you the collectible that you wanted so dearly so that you'll shut up already. Yes, these are very difficult to obtain, but killing these guys will give you an easy chance of getting them. I would say easy because I've gotten a lot of them in previous playthroughs, even though it hasn't exactly been cooperating. I still recommend that you kill as many of these guys as you have, and with the tactics that I have shown you, it's not difficult at all. Unless you knock them off of the cliff and kill them in the wrong way. Which I didn't think it was possible to kill something incorrectly, but I found a way. Ride this around. Gonna hop down again. So we're going through here. Basically, we're just gonna be reversing the direction of these wheels so that we can run along them. If you try to swim upstream, doesn't matter how much stamina you have, doesn't matter how much you roll, you just will not be able to reach the end and get off of the pathway without falling off. Now that we've reversed the direction of that one, I hop up this way. I see the end, I see the end, I see the end, good. Was momentarily worried that we were gonna run into stamina, but nah, we were fine, and that guy didn't have anything for us. You gotta wonder why some of them turn into those skulls that have collectibles for you, whereas others turn into zombies, and I'd rather not roll headfirst into a pit of bones, please. Let's, I, I'd rather release this flywheel and show that we got this over here. That'll take you, if you want to go back to the Buddha statue, then you can easily get back up here. I think you know how shortcuts work, so I'll cut down on it, yeah. Beetle time! See a blue rupee, a lot of stuff in it. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Color scheme of this place is brilliant, how they have like lots of like yellows and greens and stuff like that. And then it becomes like this deep like purple with like bits of blue for accents. It's just, it's so nice how much they change it on you. And now we're surrounded by bones with just a lone little rope to climb up. And in comes our penance for not dedicating a video to the Bacoblin kind! These guys will endlessly respawn. You have to climb this rope with them chasing after you. If you go down and kill some of them, they will just simply do this all over again. It's... A lot of people are creeped out by this, understandably so. This is what I mean by the false sense of security they give you. And this looks like some kind of like extreme symbolism, how we're just in an all-white room being chased by zombies or something like that. But we make it out somehow. And we are greeted with this stone tablet. This effin' stone tablet. Return to the stone giant, return the stone giant to its original form and descend below the earth again along this thread. There you will find the key to the path ahead. Yeah, go back down that rope again. No problem. Thanks. Uh-huh. <laughs> Scare people half to death, and... Okay, I guess it wouldn't be a Nintendo game if it wasn't giving you nightmares, but... This isn't Pokemon, okay? It's not... 
It's supposed to be that nightmare fuely. <laughs> oh boy. So we've returned the statue to its original position. We're headed back to purgatory. See you there. <laughs> At least the way the music dies down to kind of make note of that is kind of funny. <laughs> now that we've returned the statue to its original position, we had that shortcut back to where we needed to go. Or back to where we entered. Which happened to be right where the statue was. Get an amber relic. And here it is. Where we saw that key chest all that time ago. And once again we find ourselves... Surrounded by bones that are crunching and crinkling beneath our feet. There is the blessed idol. This carved wood statue looks like it's supposed to inspire gratitude. It also looks like the stone statue on the upper floor. Apparently the idol felt like our gratitude was not inspired enough. Do not get greedy on this part. Also, those bokoblins are now living out somebody's fetish. But do not get greedy on this part. On my first playthrough, I thought to myself, eh, I got a few seconds before it falls down all the way. I can probably get a few evil crystals before it's too late. No. Don't even bother. Straight up, instant game over, should you not get out of the way in time. It is not worth it. You might as well fight cursed bokoblins elsewhere. So, uh, we just gotta climb up this rope again. Nothing to it. Oh, actually, no, nothing to it. Well, nothing? Oh, okay. Not complaining, mind you, but I honestly thought they would fight you again. Well. Upon getting to the top of this, we've returned the statue back to its rightful place, and now, with the key to the way forward, one realizes that this whole area is actually his crown. That's pretty classy. <laughs> Next time on The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, we see what is at the top of the statue in the middle of the ancient cistern. See you guys then.